Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Ripple has scored a major victory at a court hearing today, which prompted Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse to tweet out the following. <clears throat> today was a good day. That's it. That's the whole tweet. Today was a good day. And today was indeed a good day. And I don't even think that he was referencing the price action of XRP, which I will be talking about in uh, the, the very next video I put out. Not, not in this video. Uh, but this is a fantastic day for Ripple. And I'm going to share with you opinions in this latest Moon Lambo hot jam. Uh, opinions from three lawyers within the XRP community giving their takes and opinions on what has happened here. And I'll, I'll spoil a little bit here at the outset. Two of them think that as a result of what has happened today, you may be seeing a settlement between the SEC and Ripple and potentially uh, within the next several weeks or so. Not a guarantee, but uh, I'll, I'll unpack all of it in this uh, video. But I do want to be clear also, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, all right? I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos as a fun hobby about Ripple and XRP and crypto and basket weaving. That's all that this is, mostly basket weaving, but that's all that this is. Just to be super clear, I don't want anyone to think I'm someone or something that I'm not. Uh, and so here you go. Let's go ahead and jump in. And here's a piece from Cointelegraph titled Ripple wins access to SEC discussions on defining crypto assets as securities. And so it's amazing that the SEC may have botched this thing from the get go. If this goes the way that we hope that it will, because they overcharged. I mean, that's a subjective opinion. I think so. And a lot of the lawyers that I follow think so. And uh, the lawyers that I follow think that uh, the SEC is probably realizing at this point that it was, it was a mistake to charge uh, Ripple and uh, and Brad Garling. I'm sorry, uh, not Ripple. Uh, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson with. Uh, and mind you, look, charging Ripple's one thing, saying that you, you sold XRP as an unregistered security, but charging the executives that are running Ripple, that's unheard of. That's like unprecedented. Uh, lawyers, whether they're pro Ripple or anti Ripple, on both sides are like, yeah, that's a surprise. We weren't expecting to see that. And the reason this matters is because there's a higher burden of proof if you're charging individuals. Uh, specifically, you have to prove not just that uh, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson sued, uh, or, I'm sorry, not that they sued, that they uh, sold, rather, um, XRP knowing that it was a security. Uh, it's not just that they, I'm sorry, let me, let me back up like 10 seconds, just pretend that last 10 seconds didn't happen here. It's been a long day for Moon, though. Um, I really am going on fumes here. But um, it's it's not just that uh, uh, Brad Garlinghouse and, and Chris Larson have to have sold um, XRP illegally. It's that they have to have known that what they were doing was wrong, effectively, in a nutshell. that That's it. And so... If, if that's the, the burden of, of proof that you must, re, must reach, then uh, Ripple has to have an opportunity to defend themselves in terms of fair notice. That's where you get into uh, all sorts of stickiness for the SEC in particular, because uh, thanks to all this happening, uh, Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, all of their lawyers, are, see, are, are pursuing this fair notice uh, defense, which basically... Is, uh, is is indicating that hey we we've been uh, selling this for uh, for you know better part of a decade yeah haven't come after us what gives that's effectively what it is here and there's there's all sorts of stuff as you'll see where uh, it's it's if there's a smoking gun that the SEC is trying to hide it's likely going to come out here unless there's some sort of fraudulent activity behind the scenes which I certainly would hope would not happen there's some sort of attempt to uh, cover but if you know if you get caught doing that wow now you're <laughs> then you're really in trouble here so I'm not assuming that's going to happen but if there is something uh that's where they're going to run into trouble here and so check out the check out this this piece here Ripple Labs has been granted access to US Securities and Exchange Commission documents expressing the agency's interpretation or views on the subject of crypto assets according to law 360 U.S. Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn granted the defendant's motion in large part, determining that SEC minutes or memos concerning cryptos are likely discoverable. <clears throat> Netburn asserted staff-to-staff -staff email communications do not need to be produced. Which, you know, look, I would have preferred that everything end up being produced 
Uh, of course, I'm a little biased. Perhaps you are if you're listening to this channel. But <laughs> uh, but uh, this is probably a reasonable compromise here. And so basically what, what this ultimately means is that, yeah, informal um, staff-to-staff -staff communication. It is kind of just like how it sounds. Informal staff-to-staff -staff communication uh, where somebody could be talking to another fellow employee and maybe they're even talking about stuff unrelated to the SEC. Who knows what they're jibber-jabbering about, whatever it is. Uh, it's it's not going to be held uh, to a, a high enough standard that it would indicate an actual position of the SEC. For that, it needs to be some sort of formal document, formal memo, something along those lines <clears throat> in order for it to be discoverable. And even then, uh, the judge is allowing a path forward for the SEC to, to, to dispute specific instances, even though, uh, as you'll see, the uh, the judge ultimately went along and, and the decision was made. It's in Ripple's favor, clearly. This is, this is a big win for Ripple, which absolutely could potentially lead to a lawsuit and sooner than later. Because if I'm telling you, if there's any smoke and guns, yep, you'll, you'll see, you'll know, because the SEC will suddenly, magically, out of nowhere, seemingly want to settle. And so uh, Netburn also allowed for the SEC and Ripple to raise disputes with the ruling. Now, in December, the SEC filed a lawsuit alleging Ripple Labs, its CEO Brad Garlinghouse, and Chairman Christian Larson raised $1.38 billion through an unlicensed security offering in August 2013. Ripple has challenged the SEC suit, claiming that XRP is akin to Bitcoin, or Ethereum, both of which have been classified as commodities by the SEC, in addition to criticizing the eight years taken for the agency to file its complaint against Ripple. Law 360 reports that Garlinghouse's counsel, Matthew Solomon, believes it may be, quote, game over, end quote, for the SEC suit should they find evidence the regulator has deemed akin, XRP akin to Bitcoin or Ether, noting the SEC's regulatory purview does not extend beyond security. So ho hopefully that was self-explanatory enough, but just in case it's not, the SEC has already ceded ground when it comes to Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're letting the CFTC run that. Uh, the CFTC has full reign over Bitcoin and Ethereum because it's not a security. Those are commodities. That's what it's been ruled as, right? So if there's a smoking gun, the reason that Ripple or Mr. Garlinghouse's lawyer Matthew, Matthew Solomon said this could be game over for the SEC is because if there is something in there, and it's it's one of these formal documents that gets produced and is discoverable, uh, if it is the case that they they there's some sort of language that XRP is akin to Bitcoin or Ether. That's why I said it's game over. It would be kaput. This, this, you'll see a settlement. You'll see a settlement. Because, um, and the reason is the SEC's purview does not extend beyond securities. If XRP is also a commodity, the SEC can't even be bringing this suit against a Ripple. So that's why this is such a big deal here. And then the, it follows. The article uh, continues, rather. With the SEC having taken eight years to file its complaint against Ripple, the firm's lawyers also believe they can undermine the SEC's claims should they be able to produce documentation showing contradictory determinations as to the regulator's classification of XRP. We need this discovery to defend ourselves, Solomon stated. And, and look, and given how long it took them to go after Ripple, who you can only imagine, just like I can only imagine, what types of conversations were had behind the scenes, and uh, we might end up finding out some of this. I certainly hope so. And it, if they waited this long to go after Ripple... Uh, don't you imagine that there's a reasonable chance at a minimum that there's going to be something in there indicating that they don't know what the hell XRP is, which would be good in and of itself, or that at some point uh, they, they believed uh, that uh, XRP was like Bitcoin or Ether, which are commodities and not securities? Could that have happened at some point in time by somebody that matters? We'll see, right? And then uh, they're right here. However, SEC counsel Dugan Bliss has criticized the defendants for seeking to put the commission on trial by scrutinizing its internal deliberations rather than defending its allegedly illicit actions, stating, quote, the actions of the promoter are what need to be the focus here. Uh, and so there you go. This like, this has to be one of those disingenuous statements. Like, I, I get it. The SEC counsel stating this. Does the individual actually believe that? Of course, this is completely relevant here. Uh, you know, it, it was super duper clear to, to the judge. In fact, you know what the judge said? And I'm going to have to paraphrase a bit. But on the, this, uh, this hearing today, the judge said effectively, um, you know, because she's, she's, she's asking, okay, what, what is your rationale, uh, uh, SEC lawyers, uh, to, to, to have the position that 
these internal this internal documentation having to do with Bitcoin and Ethereum should not be discoverable. What, what is your defense? And um, and ultimately, the, the judge ended up coming back and saying, "Well, look, if if you uh, if it's if it's your stance that I should determine whether or not this is uh, discoverable or not, you you basically might as well be asking me to just determine the outcome of the case because right here, this is evidence for the case. And if you're telling me like basically." don't include this evidence without reason, then you're basically effectively telling me to decide the case right now. Which which gave a pretty strong indication of where this judge lies, not in favor of the SEC, which was quite fascinating here. So, uh, interesting, right? Now, um, oh, and also worth mentioning, during the proceedings, Judge Netburn noted significant public interest in the hearing with more than 500 individuals having dialed in through a public phone number uh, to observe the case. The judge also warned that one individual for uh, warned one individual for rebroadcasting audio from the hearing in violation of the New York regulations. And uh, here's a quote. Whoever is engaging in this conduct may be subject to criminal sanctions, the judge ordered. A uh, judge said, rather. So if, if you're recording this, first of all, don't do that. That is illegal. Uh, you can get in big trouble. And if you're rebroadcasting it, uh, the judge says that, uh, you know, you could be subject to criminal sanctions. So why would you want to participate in something? Like, don't do that. Be a, be a good person. It's not going to make XRP uh, look any better by, by behaving like that. And also, um, Jeremy Hogan pointed out, too, Attorney Jeremy Hogan, that uh, the the max number of individuals that can be on this call is 500, and so they tapped out the system. Which he his point, I thought it was pretty solid. He's like, look, this is going to indicate to the judge to the judge that this is no ordinary case. Like there are real um, there are real um, uh, like interests at play from parties that maybe aren't necessarily completely represented in this in the, in this case. So. Uh, well, no, is it surprising? You know, there's millions of XRP accounts out there. Anybody that's an XRP holder doesn't like this. I mean, with rare exception, you can find those that are, uh, you know, going for a money grab, trying to sue Ripple, claiming that they sold an unregistered security in separate cases. But outside of those instances, which are rare, no, your XRP holders don't think the SEC is in the right here. We don't feel protected by them. And so here's some more from attorney Jeremy Hogan. I am, and this is before the hearing, by the way, check this out. I am prepping for the SEC versus Ripple hearing and did a deep dive into some documents and look what I found. It's the SEC stating in a public document, the digital currency company called Ripple Labs, apparently the SEC uh, agreed with FinCEN at least back in 2016. Uh, the SEC must now uh, explain to the court how a digital currency uh, transformed to digital security. And so there you go. They're using the language that uh, Ripple wants them to use and uh, they, the SEC today doesn't want to use. They, they were using it. So why did they call it a digital currency when they're calling it a digital security now? How are you going to defend that? And so then Jeremy Hogan wrote, that explanation is part of the batch of documents the parties will be fighting over today. And um, <sighs> it's, it's just, see, it's, it's part of why I said... I've been saying for a long time that the SEC, like their logic, a, a huge portion of it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's illogical. Their arguments are illogical. They're hypocritical, and you just have to question what is the motivation for this. And I have, I have speculated on that. I think it's uh, likely a power and and or money grab. That's because what the hell else could it be? I mean, yeah, there could be find some internal, uh, personal, uh, disgruntled people, something to that effect, but. I, Outside of that, it's, it's certainly not what they're presenting it to be, what they're verbally stating it to be. Um, and then there was this uh, also. Uh, somebody asked, somebody named C Donkey asked to Jeremy Hogan, is this really that significant? Does being a currency explicitly result in XRP not being a security? I was under the impression the SEC is arguing the sale of XRP was an investment contract. Hence, a security sale can still have occurred depending on the method of distribution. And Jeremy did respond and wrote the following. It is of some significance, RE, the Howey test, but very significant in RE, Ripple's fair notice defense. That's why today's hearing and the motion to dismiss the fair notice defense are extremely important in this case. Yep. Uh, and then there was this from Crypto Law, which is attorney John Deaton's uh, new uh, new uh, website that he started. is crypto-law.us and their Twitter, Twitter handle is just at Crypto Law US. Uh, they shared the following, it re referencing the what happened at the, uh, the the court hearing today. It was a high-stakes discovery win for Ripple, Judge Netburn said, as she issued her ruling. 
SEC minutes and memos expressing the agency's interpretation or views on cryptos are likely discoverable, she ruled. Uh, here's a comment from attorney Jesse Hines. This is a good win for Ripple et al. Offers hope for, uh, for what they'll find. Uh, he also then wrote the following. If there is something that the SEC is afraid of disclosing, you will now see a settlement. We'll see. So it's not a guarantee, but wouldn't mind seeing that. And the other attorney that uh, also stated that, and it wasn't on Twitter, but it was uh, it was Jeremy Hogan, and he said, "Yeah, you might you you, you <laughs> if there's if there's a smoking gun, you very well may see a, a settlement much sooner than you otherwise would have, because if, if it's truly a slam dunk, and you you gotta wonder then, like, why would the SEC bring the suit if that were the case? Were they that confident that this information wouldn't get out?" Were they? I mean, granted, look, they've everybody has something to lose in this. The SEC has less to lose than Ripple. Like, Ripple, if this went horribly wrong, in theory, they could just stop being a company. Now, I don't think it would come to that. I'm just saying. Uh, but for the SEC, what's the worst that happens to them? Well, uh, you... you you care about your status in life, your power position, how people perceive you, right? And so if you're the SEC, if you, you, you want to save face on something like this, you'll settle if, uh, if there's a smoking gun here. But they certainly have less to lose. Like, the SEC is going to continue to exist no matter what happens here. It's more about ego and pride, one would think, than anything else here. So, man, if there is something. Uh, here's, a, here's a comment from attorney John Deaton. Judge Nepburn and Judge Torres are very smart and very fair judges. So, just to be clear, those are the two judges, uh, two of the judges in the uh, SEC versus Ripple case. And then he continues, um, XRP holders and the crypto community are lucky that these two judges were assigned a case of this magnitude. Please do not release any recordings of this hearing if it was recorded. Yeah, heed that warning, please, as I cited also. Um, and then uh, John Deaton also shared the following. Ripple identified 19 custodians, so this would be SEC past or present employees, that Ripple wants the SEC to search emails for, etc. Ripple included uh, SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce, uh, as then SEC Commissioner, uh, um, a chairman rather, Jay Clayton. Then there was Elad Roisman, Berger, Bill Hinman, etc. on that list. The SEC objected to Jay Clayton, William Hinman, Elad Roisner, and Hester Peirce, etc., Ripple won. So all of those documents that the SEC really didn't want Ripple or anyone or any XRP holder to see, well, they're coming out. Ripple won. It's happening. So there we are. Suck it, SEC. <laughs> <sighs> Hashtag eggplant. Here's another one from John Deaton. I said that charging Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson would prove to be a mistake. If there's no fraud, there's no fraud, and that and that it was a bullying tactic. Remember what I said about how you deal with a bully? You punch him in his face. The SEC just got punched in the face. And then John wrote this. Huge discovery. The SEC attorney stated that last week, Ripple issued a subpoena to Clayton at his new place of employment for any communications related to digital assets, including, but not limited to, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. Well played. Yeah, so we'll see what comes of that. But again, uh, look, for, well, in case you haven't been following, former SEC Chair Jay Clayton got another job. Uh, he's got a few things going on, in fact, including one of the things uh, is he, he went back to his old law firm. And so uh, th there you go. Ripple issued a subpoena, so, uh, just try, try, you know, uh, trying to... Uh, well, let's just say get some information from Clayton. Should anything come up surrounding Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP, uh, even at the new place of employment? That's good stuff. That's a fun move. And then John Deaton also wrote this. And on the topic of Clayton, let me quote Ripple's lawyer. Your Honor, former SEC Chairman Clayton authorized this suit on essentially his last day. He obviously concluded that Bitcoin and Ethereum weren't securities, but XRP was. And that's a, a direct quote. And then John writes, Clayton used the enforcement action as a weapon. So uh, makes sense to me if, if we can legally get this done to track anything that uh, Jay says moving forward about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. That, that, I'm all for it. <laughs> But um, I'll go ahead and wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.